been facing, but God said it's going to be all right. Hey. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. God has never turned his back on us. I don't know what his back looked like. Huh? He won't walk away from me. I ain't never seen his back. How? Oh! Yes, Lord, take your seats. But I feel something breaking. Breakthrough is all in this house. Just get ready. I, somebody need to hear that. Get ready. Get ready. What you've been praying for is already making its way. If it's healing you need, it's here. Thank you, Jesus. Be seated, y'all, only if you can. Woo, but I feel breakthrough. I know at home, no, your breakthrough is here. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for our precious pastors, Pastors Claude, Pastor Gina. Thank God for them. We thank God for being who he is, too. I thank God for my teammates in the gospel. Thank God for the leaders here. I thank God for the, our volunteers, our dream team. And those of you who are here today, thank y'all so much for your love and your support. And those of you at home watching us, we thank God for you as well. And God is just in this place. Can't y'all feel him? Can't you feel something big is getting ready to happen for you and your house? Oh yeah, I feel it. And for our church, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. And you keep declaring it until you see it. And when that shows up, keep declaring the next thing. Because as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to see what God promised. Don't forget y'all about our vision campaign. Continue to sow into the vision campaign, no matter how big or how small it is. Continue to give to the vision campaign because God's doing exactly what he said. Yes, because we're giving to something that will outlive us. So I'm grateful to have that opportunity. Don't forget ladies, Tuesday, it's our women's Bible study here at New Life West. Don't forget, we're not fully back in person during the week, but we're, we want to do something a little different on Tuesday. So it's hybrid. So if you want to come in person, you're more than welcome to do that. If you want to um, join us at home via online, you're more than welcome to do that too. We just want you all to gather because something great happens when God's girls, right? Get together. So um, we're excited about that. And we're talking about having a miracle mindset. Ooh, so if you're ready to take your walk with God to a whole nother level, join us this coming Tuesday at seven. And don't forget Wednesday, Bible Impact with Pastor Gina. And that will be completely virtual. And we're, we know we're always blessed because Lord knows I was blessed last Wednesday. Her discussion about the family and helping the men because we have great men in this church. We do. And there's great men that live in Augusta. And I put up a post a long time ago. I was like, ladies, you can't say all men are dogs and then say you want a good man. Which one is it? They can't all be dogs. And then you say you want a good one. with they're all dogs, then that means the little babies we done had that have been, they came out as puppies. <laughs> so all men are not dogs. And none of them are dogs. We all just need a bit of loving, right, and guidance. So I thank God for that lesson that we got. All right, <clears throat> so let's run over y'all to Hebrews chapter 11. That's where we're hanging out today. Thank God for Brother Henry helping us out. Yes. Let's head over to Hebrews chapter 11, verse seven. Thank you, Lord. And for the sake of time, I'll jump right in. Not sure what kind of translation you have, but I'll be reading out the New Living Translation. And I'll write Sister Burley. Amen. She has stock in the New Living Translation. <laughs> All right. And it says this, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, New Living Translation. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Wasn't that good, y'all? Yeah. Again, y'all, that's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. That's out the New Living Translation. So I love studying the structure of families, right? And, and please don't look at me twisted and under eye, but I love, you know, watching stuff like The Godfather. 
Thank you. I, you know, I'm all about loyalty. I, I am, I am deep down inside. A part of me, I think, could have rolled with the mafia. I don't know. I don't agree with the killing part, but I'm totally cool with that loyalty thing. Yes. Don't look at me twisted. If I heard some of y'all testimony, some of y'all were probably in it. <laughs> Anyways. But I love studying the structure of family, right? Because when it's all said and done, at the end of the day, all you have is what? That's all you got. When the applause is stopped, when they stop going to your Facebook page and liking your posts, at the end of the day, if they took all the social media channels down and you have no other way for people to say, oh, that's wonderful, oh, that's great, oh, I love that accomplishment, who do you have left? all you got is family that's why I love my church family because we have prayed together we've walked through ups and downs together we've been married together can we keep being real we've walked through divorces together we've walked through the loss of loved ones together but God knows that I need you just like you need me Woo because when it's all said and done all you got is who so I love looking at, for example, some of our wealthier families in the nation. You got families like the Rockefellers, right? Ford and some of our newbies like Hilton. I love looking at how they built their generational wealth and how they passed that along. And then I like looking at families who have put a lot of emphasis on education, like everybody in the house has a degree. Very fascinated by that. I'm also fascinated by families where it's like everybody in the house was a preacher. The great grandfather was a preacher, grandfather was a preacher, father was a preacher, now the kid is a, I'm just like, goodness gracious. You come out the womb with a little baby bike. It is, it is fascinating to me, and it doesn't matter whatever the industry is, I always find that real fascinating. But I'm gonna tell you, as I continue to walk with God, and I already realize this, but the more I walk with God, the more it becomes concrete within my heart that it's wonderful to see a lot of wealthy families and I've looked at people who have accumulated a lot of stuff and I'm like, man, they got money. But at the end of the day, money will fail you. Don't get me wrong, I love nice things and I know about money, don't get it twisted. But money will fail you, will, so that's not the end all be all. I love degrees, I love education. I think you should get as much as you can get, but at the end of the day, Education does not equal intelligence. Y'all with me? Are we, are y'all rolling with me? Cause I've met a lot of dumb educated folks. Oh Jesus. Right? All right. I felt that. Someone said, Pre I felt that. Come on say, it ain't nothing but a handful of us. We could be for real stomped down truthful in here. Right? And then, <clears throat> and so I said, as I keep walking with God, I already knew this, but it becomes even more concrete within my heart that at the end of the day, education isn't it, money isn't it. It's the family whose foundation is rooted in the faith. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That astonishes me, that, that just, it baffles me. It, 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 I'm just so like blown away by looking at families where they pass down kingdom principles yeah. because that family will outlast the test of time. So yeah, I thank God for the, for the cars with the high-end logos on them, but at the end of the day, darling, that ain't it. Oh, it's quiet, but you know, pray for me because I'm sure I might not have too many friends after this and y'all know me, I honestly don't care. But I said, God, we've got to get back to building kingdom families. Can't you hear God making this cry? I want kingdom families. I want kingdom men. I want men that will not just make babies and have other men raise them. I, I want men that will be in their children's lives. Oh God, help me teach it. I want men who will marry women and they won't have wandering eyes. I want kingdom men. God says, I want kingdom women, women who know how to submit and be good wives and daughters in their church. It's quiet, but I know I'm teaching right. God's calling for kingdom women who know how to pray and know how to keep their legs closed until God sends them their husband. Oh, I know I'm teaching good. It's quiet, but today is Independence Day and I'm gonna help you get free. 
God is saying, I want kingdom singles, singles that will know how to remain chaste. Whether you get married or not, God's calling for kingdom children. God did not say you can become kingdom when you turn 30. The day that you're born, you are called to be kingdom. And just because you're in your 80s, it doesn't mean you stop being kingdom. I do not believe that you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Because if that's the case, then I don't need to witness at the senior citizen home. I know it's quiet because some of us, we love that excuse. Well, this is how I am. The devil is a liar. As long as you're breathing, your mind can change. Oh, God can keep you only if you want to be kept. So God is calling for kingdom family. So I got my topic is three words, three words, three words. Save your family. Save your family. I don't know how long God's going to have me on this series, but I just feel it. We even heard it Wednesday, the way Pastor Gina is teaching us. Legacy, y'all, is what matters. Legacy is what matters. What am I leaving behind God? Oh, what good is it to have all the notoriety and my children go to hell? What good is it to have a ministry that allows me to go all across the world and I am not leaving anything behind that shows that I love God? Oh, God, save your family. Who cares about if they know you? It doesn't matter if Bishop Blake doesn't know my name. What matters is that my children knew that I lived upright before them. God is calling for kingdom. Families, is anybody rolling with me? It's time for us to see families in the church lifting their hands, saying we will not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways we will acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Oh, God. Ooh, God is calling for kingdom. Families, I am not impressed by your Gucci belts. I am impressed by how long you can stay in his presence. I am not impressed by your cute hairstyles and your lashes. I am impressed by how you can withstand under trials. God is saying, I want to see fathers put it in their sons and their sons put it in their sons. That is what the enemy does not want. God is saying, Woo! Save your family. Save your family. Oh, God, we're going to walk through it because, trust me, I'm not naive. I know there are some folks in the room, they're like, Daniel, I'm trying, but I've never had a blueprint before. I've never seen what it's like to be a good husband before. I've never seen it. I don't know what it's like to be a good wife before. I've never seen it. I'm the first one in my family to get saved. God said, that's why I let you be the first so that you can save your family. Woo! Are y'all with me? Let's walk this. Let's walk this. I'm reminded of the story of Noah. I've been meditating on him for a while now. I've been reminded of the story of Noda, Nova, Nova, Noda, Noah is his name. Okay. And it is proof that God will sustain those who trust him. Now, Noah trusted God when there was no proof of his promises. Right? Because I'm going to tell you why I love Noah and I'm going to tell you why I love families who are rooted in faith. It's because without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can have all the money, but God ain't happy with you. Don't mean he don't love you, but he is not pleased with what you're doing. So I love the story of Noah because over in Genesis chapter 6, that's where we meet him. <clears throat> During Noah's time, the world was wicked. Perverse things became normal. I mean, ev everything about the earth was backwards, yes. And perverse things became acceptable. It was okay. For things that God said, that's not how I designed them to be. But they said, oh, it's okay for that to be that way. Oh, I need some folks rolling with me. Is that not the case that we see now? 
things. People are living in ways that God did not design them to live. Oh, this world has become wicked and I don't freak out about it because it's supposed to happen. So, but during this time, everything about the earth was wicked, yet there was one man that said, I refuse to accept your normal. Oh God, is that not the case now for us? This world is backwards, it is wicked, it is turned upside down. Yet, I have a question, is there anybody here that says, I will still not accept the world's normal. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. Oh, I'm going to tell you why I love Noah. Noah is one of the heroes of faith in the Bible. The Bible said that Noah remained upright before God, that he walked blameless among the people, listen, of his time. And he walked with God. God, everybody in here has their time. Some of us, our time was the 60s. <laughs> and and as I hear you, Pastor Gina. And if you're still breathing, it still is your time. But oh goodness, those of us my age, we're in positions of power. It's our time now to walk up rightly among people we work with. Can I, can they say Danielle has remained blameless? God, I know, I know I'm deep, I'm walking in some deep stuff because this is kind of little old school holiness for some folks, but it's still right. Yes. Okay. So Noah was walking blameless among the people of his family, amongst his neighborhood, but yet and still, here's what I love Noah remained upright before his children and his wife. So much so he was able to convince them to get on an ark. They didn't say, daddy, you flip flop. How I know you ain't lying now. He had a, see, that's what I'm saying. It don't matter if they don't like me. It don't matter if they don't hear me, Sister Bridges, can my children follow me? See, let me tell you about Danielle Elizabeth. I don't care about the stuff you got. I look at your kids. See, I know they don't like this kind of teaching. They don't like this kind of teaching. I don't care about your accolades. I look at your family because that is your first ministry. So if your kids don't line up quite with what you're saying, if they cannot be convinced to get on an ark of safety with you, Am I talking right, pastors? God is saying we got to get back to the main thing. Save your family. So Noah walked not only blameless in front of his co-workers, not only blameless in front of those he went to the doctor's office with, but he walked blameless in front of his children. He let his children see him have faith in the good and through the bad. He was proven in front of them. All right, let's keep walking this. And so therefore, Noah was given the blessing to be a part of God's restart of earth. God said, I'm sending a flood because I hate I even made man in the first place. It's so wicked here. And I'm getting ready to send a flood. And Noah, I want you to build an ark so that you can save your family from the flood. And when the flood subsides, you will be here to replenish the earth. God is telling somebody your families were in so much disarray with how you were raised. I'm getting ready to destroy that way of thinking out of your lineage. And you are now going to be a part of the restart of moving your family in a whole nother generation in a whole nother way. Can I be honest with you? I've heard my parents' testimony. And if they had not said yes to God, if they had not built an ark for my brother and I, where in the world, Elder Walker, would I? Be, I would have been caught in the flood of debt. I would have been caught in the flood of lust. I would have been caught in the flood of this is how we make money. Y'all ain't talking to me. I would have been caught in the flood. 
Yet and still, they said we might not see the rain, but God said a flood is coming to the Harrises. God said a flood is coming to the tank fleece, so we'll build an ark so that our children might be saved. Woo! Jesus, are y'all getting what I'm trying to dish out? Save your families. Save your families. To save your families, you must walk uprightly before them and others. We've got to sit and pause, y'all. Got to sit and pause and think about the proclivities that run in our families. You got to be honest, you got to sit down, you got to, you got to sit and you got to think and you got to pray what's been holding my family hostage, what runs no, 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 stop. through my family's bloodline. You got to sit and you got to think what keeps holding my sons back, what keeps holding me back, what keeps holding my daughters back and I've got to break it today. I'm gonna tell you, I told y'all I might not have too many friends after this sermon, but that is completely fine with me. We've got to say no more of having children out of wedlock. Oh, I need somebody because we're kingdom. We're kingdom. So this thing that got my grandmama can't keep getting me, all right? I found myself in this spot now. I'm breaking it so my son will not repeat it. I'm going to break it so my daughter will not repeat it. And Sister Clark, that's called building an ark. I build my ark with prayer. I build my ark with worship. I build my ark by making sure my children are in the church. I build an ark by making sure they see how I obey my leadership. Woo! I'm building an ark every time I'm faithful at that audio book. I'm building an ark every time you see me show up to sitting at his feet prayer it might look like it's nothing to you but I'm it's called building an ark because I got to save my child I got to save my legacy I've got to save my family so I got to get still and I got to be honest why do I like that type of woman why do I like that type of man why am I still bound by these soul ties why do every time I get some money I got to go spend it where does that come from why did all of us keep living in apartments and none of us had our own house God I must break this off my family I got to save I got to show them I got to show them that it can be done I got to show them that you can have a setback, but God will give you a comeback. I got to show them that you can make the mistake. All right, so we started out in a mistake, but I'm going to show them that how God can get you out of it. Woo! And yes, I'll add, this is how I build my heart, Sister James. I'm honest. I'm honest. Oh, he not. She are not all over. So that's how. That's how I build my ark. I'm honest because I didn't wait on God. That's why we got in debt, baby. I, I get honest with them, and that's how I laid the foundation. I, I got out of God's will. That's why we're in the predicament that we're in. That's why my mind is the way it is. That's why my body is the way it is. I got out of His will, but babies, when you repent and you get back in His will, He will restore the years that the can't a worm Woo! and my honesty Juanita breaks the spirit off my family and it gives them a ark gives them a ark he does yeah Woo! gives them a ark because the enemy cannot survive where there is character the enemy cannot survive where there is integrity the enemy cannot survive where there is truth because Jesus is the truth and I'm saving my family. Woo! I can't hang out with you no more. Don't think, doesn't mean that I think I'm better than you. I'm trying to save my family. Woo! Oh, God. Help me, God, to save my family. God is saying a flood is coming. A flood is coming. Rain is coming. Now keep in mind in Noah's days he had never seen rain. The earth was being um, watered with mist. 
But rain, he never seen that. God is telling somebody, rain is coming. Rain is coming. You ain't never seen that. Blessings are coming. Blessings are coming. I'm talking about God's like, I got big blessings for you. But nobody in my family has ever held that much money. We, we have never lived on that level. God said, build an ark. I'm going to help you restart your whole family. Something big is coming. God, I've never, whoo, I've never lived on that level before. I've never, whoo, Jesus, y'all know me. I get my mind, I get mine even if y'all don't get yours. God says, I'm opening up something different. Woo! And I'm going to let it start with And guess what? You've never seen. Oh, God, you know I love my brothers. God knows I love my brothers. You might have never been given the blueprint on how to raise a child. You may have never been given the blueprint Woo! on how to date correctly. You may have never been given the blueprint on what it means to be a husband. God said, just like Noah, you never saw before, but I'm going to tell you how to build it. I'll tell you how wide it should be. I'll tell you how tall it should be. I'll tell you how, how many animals I want on the inside. Your daddy may not have been responsible, but I am your father. And I'll show you how to save your family from this point forward. Save your family, God said, I will provide. No, 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 sir. I will provide the blueprint. I will provide. There's some mamas in here too. There's some ladies in here too. Say, Danielle, don't leave me out. Sister girl, God said, I will provide the blueprint. Don't worry about the naysayers that says it has never happened before. God said, they're not God. I am. And I know what I have for you. I'm almost done. Let's keep going. So disregard the distractions when you are building, when you are saving your family because they're not going where you're going. And let the new beginning start with me, with you. Y'all still with me? I'm almost done. When you look at the ark, it was about the size of one football field and a half. Sometimes I think about that. I'm like, Lord Jesus, there were no bathrooms. And I really want to talk to the Lord about why did we keep mosquitoes? Why did we keep lizards? Why did we keep snakes? Why did we keep roaches? And who fed them while they were on the ark? Can we talk about that? Thank you, Jesus. And it was about four stories high. <clears throat> and so when you think about this ark, Henry, there were no rudders. There were no windows on this ark. Whew. So when I think about this ark, the rudder was God. The ark only had God pushing it. Had no rudder. No, it couldn't move it the way he wanted to. It was God that was guiding that ark in the direction that he wanted. See, when you are building an ark from your family, it is not you guiding it. I'm not leaning to my own understanding, Sister Burley. I'm not leaning to what used to work for me in the past. I'm letting God guide. Guide this ark. He knows my end from the beginning. There were no windows on this ark, so I can't see what tomorrow holds. All I know is that my children are safe in the ark. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years. All I know is we're where God wants us. I'm in his will, Juanita. Save your family. As I bring this to a close, I hope y'all got something. God is calling for us, this ministry, for the body of Christ to save our families. Save your family. If y'all have never prayed together, let it start with you. Let it start with you. Okay, so you're showing up by yourself, the church. It's okay, let it start. With you, Lord, I put my whole family in your hands. Because the devil never wins. The devil never wins. So God, my children, there might not be beside me in church, but God, wherever they are, I put them. Woo! 
in your hands and I come against every assignment of the adversary. And what you're doing is you're building an ark. Enough. No, 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 God. I declare every assignment of the adversary will not have my child's mind. And see, you got to stand up to it. Stand up to it. Y'all know what your it is. Is it homosexuality? You may have had me in my 20s. Oh, I'm stepping. I may have dibbled and dabbled in my 20s and 30s. Oh, y'all know, now don't look at me. I ain't talking about my testimony. I'm trying to help somebody in the room, so don't be trying to figure out Danielle's story. Worry about your own story. And that has opened up Pandora's box in your family. I close it. I destroy it. You will not have my children. You may have dibbled and dabbled in weed and cocaine. I speak to that spirit of addiction. And I say you will no longer have my children. What I'm doing is building an ark. Woo! I break it. I break it, I break it off me, and I break it off my children. Oh, I break it off my money, and I break it off my children. That spirit of just diabetes running rampant in my family, I break it off me, and I break it off my children. Oh, I need somebody declaring with me. Let's take a few moments to declare. I know it's Independence Day and we getting ready to walk free. That spirit of racism, you ran in my family. I break you off me and I break you off my children whom the sun sets free. Woo! That spirit of showing up to church when we want to, that spirit is broken off me and it's broken off my children. Having tore up marriages, the devil is a liar. That spirit is broken off of me, and that spirit is broken off my family. Woo! We will in the, we will live in the overflow. Let's take a few seconds. We got the time to clear. We will live in the overflow. We will live in peace. We will have joy. We will have clarity. We will have more than enough. And it is so. And it is so, and it is so. We will have scholarships. We will know what it's like to have joyous relationships. It is so. Save your family. Save your family. Forget the promotion and save your family. Forget the promotion and save your woo, save your family. The promotion can wait. Save your family. Save it. Save them. Save them. Save them. Save them. Save them. Save them. Woo, save them. Save them. Save them. Y'all, I feel such an urgency. Save them. Break the curse. Break the cycle. Save your family. Let the revival begin with me. Let the revival and the Harris family begin with me. I know I got a wonderful brother, but this is me, my testimony. Let it, let it begin. Let the revival in the Clark family begin with me. Let the revival in the VC family begin with me. Let the revival in the Hill family begin with me. Lord, help me save my family. Help me save my family. And it is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Woo! In Jesus' name.